Earth's history offers no exact analogy to the pace at which humans are affecting the composition of our atmosphere. In mere decades, we are putting enormous amounts of carbon in the air that took plants millions of years to store. The amount of carbon in the atmosphere is now 40% higher than it was at the start of the Industrial Revolution, and a majority of that carbon has been emitted in the last 40 years. Measuring atmospheric carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is a powerful way to study the fate of this carbon. The atmosphere is a grand integrator. It records the complex pattern of carbon uptake and release from all natural systems and human activities. Since Keeling first started taking his measurements at the summit of Mauna Loa over 70 years ago, his methods have been replicated around the world. We now have a rich picture of how the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is changing with time. And from these measurements, we know that plants, much like the ocean, have been serving as a thermostat, regulating Earth's climate by controlling carbon dioxide levels. But it's more than just plants. It's the roots and the soil and all the microorganisms that live in the soil. Um, combined, this terrestrial biosphere is absorbing and storing more carbon than it's releasing back to the atmosphere each year. And observations suggest that the more carbon we put in the atmosphere, the more carbon the land will take up. The challenge scientists face is identifying exactly where and how this carbon is being stored. The land could be gaining carbon for several reasons. The forests that were cleared during the Industrial Revolution are regrowing. Additional nitrogen from air pollution has provided needing nutrients for plant growth. Wildfire suppression has reduced carbon losses in forests. And some farmlands are being slowly returned to forested areas. The land could also be taking up more and more carbon because the added carbon in the atmosphere is acting much like plant food, fertilizing and stimulating plant growth. But a key question many scientists studying the carbon cycle have, including myself, is whether the land will continue to take up more carbon or whether it will become steadily less effective at absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere.